Whoa, whoa. I know. It's nice and loud. Uh, thank you so much for doing this. Yeah, it's well, thanks for uh, we're going to promote the show a little bit, right? Yeah. So thank I, you. Uh, of course. No, it's I it's very heartening to see that there is a show and that there have been so many shows because, you know, I imagine it's not easy to pitch shows like this to or anything that has an educational bent or a scientific bent as opposed to we got a lot of explosions. Well, uh, Seth McFarlane yeah. pointed out that uh, conservative media, one of the reasons conservative media are so successful is they scare people. Totally. People like to watch television that scares you. Yeah. And the thing that surprised me, you would think during a pandemic, people would want to watch romantic comedies or something yeah. you know, to escape. But no, people watched a rented disaster movies, Contagion. Contagion, exactly. A Poseidon Adventure or whatever. The heck. Uh, Armageddon, because uh, there's some human nature thing. You want to get even closer to it. Uh, tell me more about what's going wrong. Yeah. So we did. We made six half hour disaster movies. Yeah. And, I mean, that's and then six, you know, the world will be great movies. That's what's, I think, really interesting about it is. People did want to do that. You're right. And there were people who wanted to ignore everything, but there was a lot of leaning in. Like ignore everything. Yeah. I think I think you have to ignore everything or be in everything. You can't ignore just a little bit. But you're right about about conservative media and even just news media in general. I remember growing up, you know, my mom would be making dinner and be watching the news and the preview for whatever the next segment is was always something in your house will kill you. Yeah, it's well, it's still oh, yeah. that's Discovery yeah. Channel. That's their whole thing. Sorry. No, it's true. It's it's to, and I think what's what makes this show interesting is that it's kind of that, but also the alternative. It's like how not to die and why well, that's it. We yeah. want to we want to make the world better for everyone with Joey with science. 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 I was I was thinking about it. I was like, do I do it? Do I do it? I, I can't help it. No, it's it's and for so long that's what you've been doing. And I think what I was curious about just thinking about doing this also was years ago, you know, starting in school before you even had a job or even just like at Boeing, like when you're just doing a job, can you imagine that version of yourself now being like, I've met presidents, you know, I've had television shows, I've used science to change the world in a way that people know my name. Uh, I, I didn't, not when I was... In high school, I mean, I was in Taming of the Shrew, yeah. and that was fun. Yeah. But that's not quite the same as, yeah, to your point of having, you know, the first lady, Bill, and give me a hug. That is, a, yeah, surprising. Uh, but when we made the show, and I say we because the crew I worked with, everybody was pulling together, and it wouldn't have come out as well as it did without everybody working together. We made the show, the objective, the thing that we told each other was to change the world. Yeah. That, you know, make no small plans. That really was the objective. But to seeing, to grow up or come of age or what have you and see all these people, meet people like you yeah. who watch the show and, and are still talking about it is amazing to me. I was in, I was in uh, Bio, France, you yeah. know, where the, the tapestry is or whatever. This guy comes up to me. I watch your show. It's a French guy. What? Yeah, all my friends, we all watch your show. Wow, dude. And uh, or Guy, as they say in France. So um, uh, I try to get it. I try to get the scale of it. Right now, while we're sitting here, my lab coat, my first lab coat is in the Smithsonian on yeah. display. Wow, that was unanticipated. I got to no, say. That's I think it, it to some degree at the time, there just wasn't that sort of show. And then, you know, like, you know, obviously starting locally, there was local people just like with like Sven Gulli and local, you know, guys who would do horror shows. But it never really became a thing that everyone watched. And I think it it's not a matter of even making it cool, but making it accessible and, and, and bite size. And I think starting the conversation, because it wasn't like you told us everything about something. But I, I know I was more likely to go and look something up. You know, I, I never was, I'm, I was okay in school, but 
you know, chemistry class and fit. They weren't really my thing, but I sure as shit went and bought like the physics of interstellar after I, I said, love you, Joey. This is great. So, yeah. uh, no, so that you've touched on something that's really important and it's come up again several times in the last few, well, since the first of the year. The hard part of a show like ours or a TikTok video yeah. is what to leave out. Yeah. It's so easy to get overwhelmed with this enormous number of things. Like dinosaurs, is just the stuff you could talk about dinosaurs is overwhelming. So what do you leave, what do you home in on? What do you distill? What's, yeah. what's the product that you're gonna produce and show? And so um, I'm glad you noticed that. I okay. love you, man. I try. I mean, the end result is important. And, and you know, no one's going to mistake Jurassic Park for being scientifically accurate. But there's probably a lot more paleontologists in the last 20, 30 years because of that movie. Oh, absolutely. It's cool. That Jurassic Park is good science fiction. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's for for anyone who's like, but there's not feathers on the raptor and they would be small. You're like, yes. But it captured someone's imagination, and now they went and discovered something well, about that species. Well, not just that. When in the night, the feather hypothesis or feather acceptance of feathers as uh, generally being on all dinosaurs is pretty recent. Yeah. You know, Darwin, Charles Darwin, uh, speculated that birds were descendant of dinosaurs, and back in the, I'm going to say the sixth edition, like 1880s. Well, that's there's because something... of their feet. Yeah, bird feet, and uh, that turned out to be true. But carrying that to having feathers on all these animals was required this really sophisticated um, electron microscopy that wasn't available to Darwin. So well, people didn't think about; they thought of them as lizards. Yeah, uh, but that's a different evolutionary. Yeah, because the, the way I so I I teach once in a while substitute so i don't know anything but the way i always think about it when it's when it's any time a science conversation is that it's conversation there's not necessarily always a right or a wrong there's where we are right now obviously there's a whole other way that the world has gone with you know rejecting science but in terms of actually being engaged with science if you like you were saying it's, it's relatively new that that dinosaurs had feathers but it was always a conversation it was well if we can prove that what else can we prove? It's not that we ended the conversation. It's, oh, we figured that out. What about... So what another do? example that came comes up often is ten year, five years ago, we would say the ancient dinosaurs were killed by an asteroid that hit 65 million years ago. Well, the latest study thinks it's probably 66 million years ago. So change that. Okay. Yeah. And then... When I was a kid, there was no hypothesis about what happened to the ancient dinosaurs. It was a mystery. No, Why they... did they all disappear? Now, a guy your age would have, you would just accept it was an asteroid impact that finished them off. Yeah, it was, it was a new thing. And my, I was an adult when that hypothesis was shown to be almost certainly true, that theory. I think that's, that's also interesting for doing a science-based show, you know, over the last almost 30 years at this point the way you make a show is different the information you use is different what you can get out in a half hour or an hour is different and what the resources are you know bill nye the science guy you had to go to the library maybe you had a computer but no guarantee now everyone has every know, yeah. human information that's ever been thought of in their hand yeah oh this is amazing and it's you know in the example of wikipedia yeah. It has a mechanism for refining it. It has a mechanism for getting closer and closer to uh, consensus on uh, on facts. Sure, and that's where you're like, what's the what's the atomic weight of boron? Well, yeah. well 10, like, 11, yeah. Oh yeah, 11 we, point something. Yeah. We, we have definitely gotten. I don't know. Dumber is the right word in terms of like, how do I get somewhere? Because I don't know how to get anywhere anymore. I put my phone do it for me. Yeah, oh. well, yeah. Finding. Well, you we used to, you know, growing up, I knew everybody's phone number. Yeah, I know. You don't, need, you don't need to know that now. I know mine, I think. Yeah, well, it's good. They'll ask you yeah. for it a lot of exactly. times. Exactly. They ask you, and you have that moment where you pause and go, yep, yep, I, I got the right one. I'm going to give them but the right number. But my sister's phone number, I have to really concentrate. My brother's phone number, I really concentrate. Yeah, that's, that's one of those things where because we can have the information, we don't retain it. But 
At the same time, like you were saying, if I want to know the atomic weight of something, I can have it. You know, if you went to the store and had and were doing a recipe and your measure, you didn't know the measurements. Oh, ounces, cups. Wait a minute. You were screwed. Your food was not going to taste good that day unless you, you know, were able to do the calculations. Now you can you can just Google how many ounces. But, it's, but what you want is for people to know how to do it. Exactly. OK, so this is what we say all the time. Proce science is a collection of facts, to be sure. Yeah. But it's also a process. Science is a process. When I use the word science or hear the word science, I'm thinking about the way we know things as well as those things we know. Yeah. And uh, I'm always amazed uh, or I have reverence for uh, the idea that in the U.S. Constitution, the founding fathers or whoever is responsible for writing that thing, uh, maybe it was their wives, uh, the people who wrote the Constitution included the progress of science and useful arts. Yeah. Article 1, Section 8, Clause 8. The job of the Congress includes promoting the progress of science and useful arts. They realize the value of this process and this knowledge centuries ago. And so you just made reference to the anti-science movements that are out there. Yeah. And these are bad do, for us. Yes, you do yeah. such good work uh, against, even when you're, you know, working with people. Like, there, that's the thing. There's something very heartening about bringing, science should bring people together. It shouldn't really put people apart because you don't have to agree about everything. You can... You can find one thing there and go, oh, we we both like space. Okay, well, good. We space, man, I was about to jump on you. Space is the it. I have been in progressive congressmen, senators' offices. And I've also, the same day, been in Ted Cruz's office. Sorry to hear it. These are people that don't get along about almost everything. But oh. when it comes to funding space... I don't like space funding NASA. Everybody's on board because NASA brings is the best brand the United States has. We all grew and up watching Star Trek. The best in us, you know. Yeah. Well, the thing that I was thinking about also in terms of having been on TV for so long and bringing so many concepts to people, like how do you decide what you want to do? I'm sure there, you know, you have a season, you have your meetings, you have your ideas, but. For you, because you have to be interested in it, you have to be somewhat knowledgeable about it. Obviously, you can do your research, but how do you figure out what you're the right person to tell people beyond just well, being the right thing to tell people? Well, okay. I think if you ask anybody who works on television, we like to be on television. Yeah. I mean, I like it. It's fun. And I yeah. like... Uh, say again? Is that it pays well, too? It doesn't hurt? Like, the rent gets paid? always. I mean, uh, so... And when I started out, so this is a true story, not a false story. Right. When I started out, I was doing this every day, answering a listener question on the radio, on KJR radio in Seattle. KJR is so old. How old is it? Only has three call letters. Yeah. KJR, it's still there in Seattle. Every day I would answer a listener question about science. The line science guy, 435. All right. Then it got to the point where my name was on a billboard on a big street in Seattle, Lake City Way. And I wasn't getting paid. I was doing it for free because the guy, the host was a friend of mine. And then my attorney got me $25 a week, $5 a day, which I'll just tell you mathematically is infinitely more than zero. You have to multiply zero by infinity to even get close to five dollars you probably end up closer to one dollar so anyway uh it doesn't always pay well that said in the case of the end is nigh it started out with deep concern about anti-science and about climate change so the first end is nigh show is about these multiple hurricanes that could or cyclones that could happen at the same time uh we had you know experts do who do computer modeling of the atmosphere, this could happen. And right. that was the part of the genesis of the End is Nigh show. Yeah, you watch it and, and you you feel the weight of things, but you don't- Right on! But you don't necessarily feel 
but crushed by it, which I think is the fine line because there's a lot of shows about natural disasters, about man-made disasters, about what could what could kill you, what could eat you, what could poison you, what could make you starve. That's and you, the Discovery Channel. Right exactly. There. And at the end of the episode, you just go, all right, I'm doomed. That's great. <laughs> um, I guess I'm going to go pet my dog and cry now. But so, I, I like is that you, you got to be optimistic. I tell right. everybody, this. if you are going to play a sports game or a card game or whatever you're going to do, and you think you're going to lose... You, you you'll probably it. lose you've got to think that change is possible and it doesn't mean you're irrational and hope without basis without facts or a, a, an idea process in mind no you've got to believe that you can solve the problem or you're not going to solve it mm -hmm. and so that's why we did the show and the other thing that makes me optimistic joey seriously is pretty soon young people are going to be the majority in the electorate and you all aren't going to put up with this stuff with climate denial and uh, oppressing people for the sake of oppressing people. No, you guys are going to make changes. I'm excited, but the sooner the better. Yeah, yeah we, we got to we got to work on that quickly. But it is, I feel similar. I the current, you know, or, or, or everything is very pressing up. But you know, as as we've said over over a lifetime you know the moral arc of the history of history is long but it bends towards justice same with science same with everything most things do end up working out it's being in the middle of it that's not always the fun part so the example i just can't stop talking about Bo both of my parents hmm. were veterans of world war ii my mother was a cryptonalist she did something to decode the Nazi Enigma code and the Japanese naval code. She did something. What did yeah. you do during the war, mom? Can't talk about it. She I never were upset. What else do you need to know? Excuse me. And okay. then my father was a prisoner of war for four years, captured by the Japanese Navy for four years. But during that time, everybody was working to win the war everybody that's all people were talking about the music the posters the postal system the rationing the manufacturing the farmers letter carriers uh scientists everybody was involved in trying to win that global conflict and they did and so when i hear this hand or see this hand ring and hear this whining about we can't address climate change. It's crazy making. Come on, we can't address homelessness. Of course we can. Let's do this, people. Let's go. But I really like my plastic straw. Well, okay. So That's... <laughs> last week I was in Hawaii. I'm not kidding. And they had these cocoa, um, coconut-derived straws. Okay. They're fantastic. Yeah. Com totally compostable, made of... Uh, in that part of the world, it's almost a weed. Exactly. So one coconut apparently can make a lot of straws. They were outstanding, high performance straws. Yes, let's solve this problem. I think that's an amazing uh, place to to leave it on. Is like that's what your career has been. Has been like let's solve a problem. It doesn't have to necessarily be this way or that way. That was the fun of the show for years, and still is even with heavier topics. Like right this, on. There's more so than. So I became years. an engineer because engineers use science to solve problems and make things. That's what we do. We solve problems and make things with science. I took whatever, five Lean. years of physics. What do you want to know about science? You know, physics. I love it. Planes are in the so, air because uh, of you. It's, say it uh, again? The planes are in the air because of you. So. That's it's all me. Yes. No. Uh, on the side of the plane. An right. airplane is an engineering problem, a fabulous right. engineering problem. Um, and where do you get the idea for an airplane? You look at birds. Yeah, okay, they're doing it. Let's figure this out. I this is this has been this has been so great. I, I love that there is still a show with you on because if I was just going to watch the old show, I'd still get something out of it. But the fact that there's new material about new problems, granted, we don't necessarily want the problems to be new, but the idea that there's still someone out there saying you can solve it is is essential because there's not a lot of people who do that you know mr rogers told me i was good you beekman like there are three or four people who are like wanted me to feel good about myself on tv so still seeing that is is huge so as we as we wrap up i just want to say thank you to you well thank you 
Well, being compared to Mr. Rogers, that's pretty good. It, listen, I few people can, but I think you qualify. Wow, thank you. All oh, right. Thank uh, you. Carry on. We'll cross paths, I'm sure, soon. I hope so. Thank you again. Thank you.